Jordan. Good. Oh, sorry. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? <laughs> I am okay. I need my glasses. I'm old. I can't see anything with my glasses anymore. <laughs> I'm thankful I got um laser eye surgery, so I don't have to rely on them anymore. Hey, but listen, is that for far away or also for reading? Um, because, both. Okay, because I have the problem only. Oh, can I see very thing? I see everything very clearly far away. It's only the the computer and the reading from close by. You know, it's really difficult. So without oh. my glasses, I don't see anything. So what time is it at your place? It's um eight thirty one a.m. Oh my god, I'm sorry for you, eh? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're fine. Um, it's my day off anyway, and um, I listen to a lot of um your hits and erotic to get this party started off right to get me in an upbeat mood because that's wow. just what music does to me. Yeah, that's good. Where where are you living? Um, in um Black River, New York. So you're close to New York. Is that close to New York or inside New York? Like. Five hours away from New York City. Okay, okay. Wow. But you, with your surname, you are originally from Vasquez? Um, I would say I'm Puerto Rico, but I don't okay. have a trace of that in me because I've been living in the United States my whole life because I was born in 95. Okay, okay. So your 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 surname uh, sounds like uh, South American, and then you are, but you are from the, you were born there. So okay, always been there. Oh yeah. Okay. But um. So, oh, what were you going to say? So you are recording because you want to make some questions so that you can uh, you can have the answers to your questions, right? Yes, and um, post it on YouTube. Okay. All right. No Any... worries. And then you divide it. You you have to share it with me. Oh, so yes. I can I can share with you if you want to. All right. Um question 1. What was your upbringing like in the Netherlands? So what what the, repeat the question what was your um upbringing like when you were raised in um like living in the Netherlands. Okay, well, um, it is actually a very little, very little, little country. So uh, I actually grew up very serene because I was living in a big city, rather big city, but what is a big city in Holland? The big cities are not so big as in America anyway. Um, I was living at the border of the big city. And I, I mean we would always play in the streets. So it was a, a residential zone, but uh, you know, the Dutchies all do everything by bike. So the first thing you learn is going on a bike, on a bicycle. So you go to school uh, by yourself uh, with a bicycle. And that, that remains like this until you're 16 and you have your first motorbike. Anyway, um, I think I grew up really in a, perfect way with a very musical family because um, in the end, both my parents were very much into music, not as a job, but uh, a lot of members of the family do this as a job. I also have a big part of the family in Australia and we do have a lot of people um, doing very important things with music. So yes, it is it has always been something that was part of me, but I always wanted to be a dancer. So that's what I did. I went uh, studying as it um, always dancing, dancing. I started teaching when I was 14 because my teacher was pregnant and she would always be sitting there watching me, helping me, telling me what to do, how to do it. And actually then I decided to study to become a dance teacher and I had the bands. So with this band, uh, uh, called The Fuse, I remember. I started singing when I was 15 until my 21, just doing, uh, you know, shows everywhere. But the, the dancing was my main job, actually. 
uh, and then I left to Italy. So slowly my um, my hobby became a job. I didn't expect it to become my job, but it became my job. Incredible story. And yeah, <laughs> like life um happens when you least expect it because um sometimes when I want to do music as a job, it doesn't always work out for me. So I just exactly. settle for working until I'm um 55 because that's my legal retirement age. And I like the dancing background because like I'll I have that question um saved, but yeah, like I've always loved to dance. Like whenever I listen to your songs or erotic, I always got bust out the Carlton, the prep, and um, yeah, like dancing is such a fun activity. Yeah, it is. Anyway, you know, when you are a singer on stage of dance music, anyway, uh, the dancing is always good because, I mean, I've always been uh, doing my performances on stage as Happy Man, as the Sound Lovers, and I always had dancers with me and I would be dancing with them. So it's always been good anyway. I mean, uh, being a dancer is, uh, is ob obviously a very good thing. But when you get older... Uh, the teaching is perfect, but it's probably better to be a singer when you're about 40 than only a dancer right. because the dancing beca becomes less. So actually, it's always been something extra to my job. It's always been very good to be able to do choreographies with my dancers, maybe invent them by myself. And and now my daughter is dancing with me on stage. So it's awesome. it's good anyway. It's good. It's good. Oh, indeed. Um, question two. When and how were you bitten by the music bug? Uh, so how and when? You mean, I think, well, in my, in my um, music world, it actually started in Italy. Because uh, as I told you, I started working at Logic Studios and there... They found out I was a singer also. And then I started professionally uh, to be a singer for all kinds of records. So as a vocalist more, they would always ask me, can you sing this song for me? Can you sing that song for me? So I arrived in the music business in 91 uh, with the first final uh, with uh, the La Bionda brothers. They were also the producers of Rigueira. They were doing Vamos a la Playa and all kinds of songs. So slowly my, my music business started in 91, even, even though I had the band also in Milan, I didn't, I didn't want music to become a job. I, I wanted that music would remain my hobby, but it didn't happen. It's just like, the more I tried not to do it as a job, the more it became a job. <laughs> So oh, yeah. it's funny, but from 96, I officially gave my image to the first project, Happy Men, also to two cowboys and a lot of projects that I travel around with. But let's say in the first video clip, you see my face a little bit is Happy Men and after that in the sound bar. So uh, let's say that from 96, I officially gave my image also to the dance projects, which was not my idea of doing but anyway they convinced me and that's the way it went it's okay now it's okay i accepted it <laughs> a great um story and how you got into it because um a lot of people like didn't expect again to dance music but then when they saw how profitable and how fun it is they decided to just roll with it yeah 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 it ha it just happens in my case I never looked for it, but it happened to me. And while I was living in Milan by myself, I mean, I arrived in 91 and I was 21. That means you you have to, I mean, it is a different thing. I wasn't in my home country. I wasn't with my family. I was all by myself and um, we didn't have internet. We didn't have our smartphones. We didn't have anything. So uh, you are on your own. So every everybody who would ask me, uh, can you sing this song? They would pay me a little amount of money. And for me, it was also a way of uh, of earning some extra money. Oh, yes. Like a great way at that. Yeah. Um, so question... I managed to survive. Yes. 
Yep, indeed. Question three. What kinds of genres of music shaped your taste in music? Like, were you, like, into rock or pop and stuff like that or dance? Of course. Listen, uh, my first... Uh... Of course, my first years have always been influenced by a, a bit by my family, and they would listen to the the sixty artists. Uh, my mom loved Elvis Presley, but we would be listening to Beatles, uh, Rolling Stones, uh, or anything. Uh, a lot of uncles would always play the guitar, and we would be doing any kinds of songs. But a lot of you know, um, I got. Um, Simon and Garfunkel, maybe Elton John. I would be listening when I was getting older to anything I'd love. I loved Pat Stevens, Joan Armour trading, um, Jim Crows, all kinds of, you know, artists that would play the guitar and accompany uh, themselves. And I, I studied with my uncle when I was 14, I started studying the guitar so that I could do, sing the House of the Rising Sun by myself. But then you get older and, and you do Madonna, Michael Jackson, Sister Sledge, Chic, uh, anything, you know, what the pop is. But I love the 70s very much. Oh, and, yeah. But, you know, I started teaching. So I needed everything of Cool in the Gang, Lionel Richie, Olivia Newton-John, everything that was there at the time. I would buy vinyls. And with the money that I would be earning, I would buy my music because there was no internet. So... If you teach music, you need to buy your music, your vinyls, you record it on the cassette, you take your machine to the school and and, and you use cassettes, you know? Um, so I, I really listened to everything, to everything. And when I started playing in my band, singing in my band, I would sing Madonna, I would sing uh, Alanis Morissette, I would sing uh, anything that in that period came to me, uh, I mean, we were both singing, so we had, I don't exactly remember the repertoire, but it was Dire Straits, going to Sam Brown, I remember I was singing Stop, uh, um, Melissa Etheridge, I mean, any kind of music I'd be singing. And that's why when I went to uh, Milan and started singing um, a bit more, I did the jazz school. So in the end, I, I when I finished there, it was a lot of jazz, blues, but I already had my band uh, that was doing a lot of rock because I actually preferred the rock scene. So at that time, I would be singing Skunk and Nancy, Elena Smorazad, all uh, kinds of rock repertoire, also Rolling Stones. I would do a lot of Tina Turner, Aretha Franklin, yeah, anything. I, I, I didn't have any preference. I mean, I could listen to classical music because on the piano I, I would have to learn Bach and things like that. So I don't really have a preference. Probably the dance scene wasn't my preference because I was used to making music with musicians. And when the dance scene started, a lot was done by the computer and I didn't accept that. That was the reason why I did not give my image to a lot of dance music because I was a bit uh, ashamed by the fact that I didn't have musicians behind me, you know? Oh, yeah. Anyway, uh, slowly things had to change. And uh, I did keep on doing the gospel choir, uh, doing some shows with my band. And I even had the chance to record some songs of the Sound Lovers with the band live in the studio for uh, for the album as bonus as a bonus track. So I cannot complain, actually. I, I, I only insisted always in doing the things on uh, live and not playback, of course. Oh, yeah. And that like, was it. Yeah. Yeah, incredible answer. Like, because I, I'm i very similar to you because um I discovered all those classic songs on Dance Dance Revolutions when, um, when they had the classic song covers that were made a contemporary for DDR and Dance Mania. That's how I got into the originals. And then my music taste has evolved because now I'm more into like jazz and um, house. And that's how music matured me. Yeah, yeah. You have to. Well, I think music is music. I mean, any kind of music. You can have a preference, but all kinds of... Uh, images and all kinds of uh, 
different styles of music they 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 make you grow they make they make you a different person so it's good to listen to any kind of music i think it really opens your mind indeed um question um question uh four tell me about your um dance background as in your dance training and what did you um like about dancing in general whether it's the club or choreographed uh so that's about the dancing well i i would love i just loved dancing already but i think it probably happened because when, when my teacher was pregnant she says oh you're gonna do you're gonna do my lessons and i was like huh but i'm 14 and she said yeah, but i'm not gonna leave i'm sitting here i watch you and i'll just help you how to how to do um didactic you know with methodica didactica we call that so how, how to do that or i will help you with it so it this is another thing that happened to me i would probably be but more um i'd love to be and i've done that to be a dancer in a show group but i happened and i finished to be a teacher so i i kept teaching until my 21 uh but i also and obviously when i was 18 19 20 i went to the discotheque would be dancing you know with my friends as uh, as the discotheque dancer it's all kinds of experiences that you do when you you get a little bit of money uh extra and that was in the weekends usually in the evenings i would be doing my lessons with all kind of ages a lot of jazz more jazz afro jazz um and well, I still like it very much. Now there's a lot more urban dance, all kinds of yeah. hip hop styles. So my daughter is doing that academy in Milan. And it's nice to see how things evolved because our way of dancing was more re really, you know, even hip hop in the 90s, yeah. completely different like the urban dance now. Eh? So, oh, yeah. well, it evolved because it just happened to me. So when I started doing the dance uh, music tracks, as a vocalist yeah then then even the dancing changed there eh? because uh i had to adapt but it, i liked it i've always liked it oh so yeah. that's the way it went it just happened to me also this kind of thing happened to me oh yeah like um i never um taken a formal lesson of dance i just like watch michael jackson videos and um usher and just do their moves uh and just freestyle because michael jackson was wasn't formally trained either but he was an incredible dancer and made those moves his own and yeah but they were his own he was actually very original and those little moves that he made were his moves and everybody is still copying it in the whole world i mean there was already break dance right but um the little moves he did were rather original. A lot of them are really original. And everybody's oh. still doing them, eh? Oh, yeah. Um, question five. Were you ever into um, dance music? Like when um, house music first came out, it started becoming international in the late 80s. Um... Well, I listened to the dance music. The first dance music, what we call house dance music, uh, I was very much into uh, Snap. Uh, um, I loved listening to Soul to Soul, uh, Galliano, The Chimes, that kind of beat, you know, yeah. uh, for the first 90s. I, I came to Italy, but then... Um, I think in Italy, very, very quickly, the house music changed to uh, to real commercial dance. But, you know, uh, all the, I mean, uh, uh, Corona, Snap, uh, all those technotronic things, the 94, 93, 94, it, it already was a bit house, but very commercial dance. So I started singing in 91, 92, let's say the commercial dance music. But I did a lot of, house track singing but well I wasn't officially I shouldn't I I just signed that I was not officially the image and they couldn't use my name so I cannot say 
what I've been seeing. But I, I did a lot of different styles anyway. But I loved it. I, I really loved the... It's maybe the, the house music later, uh, in from 2002, 2004, I was a bit bo bored, to be honest, until the music was very much sang with a lot of melody. I liked it. Then when you went to the discotheques and it was only music, very repeatable, it was repeating itself all the time. I was bored. I didn't like it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, um, I've always been jealous of people that that lived through the house music um, popularity in the late 80s and 90s because it always looked like a lot of fun going to the underground Chicago clubs and stuff like that. Yeah. Now, I've only, I've been lucky uh, because I've never been there, but I, I, I had uh, two shows in 2000 and 2001 in Chicago because there was this, Polish guy with the radio, Too Cool Chris, his name was, and he had that radio station and he would put all our songs on, on his radio station. So we were, help, I lost my mic, we actually, we were actually famous in Chicago. <laughs> so that was Incredible. fun. And uh, I've been traveling to Chicago, no, not twice, I think three times. Uh, and it was a great experience. It wasn't the underground, but it was a discotheques and events where people would come to listen to our songs. Oh, yeah. Like, um, I went to Chicago for um to visit a big arcade, and I'm definitely planning on going back again. Yeah, lovely. Lovely. All right. Um, question um six. How did you get into the dance music scene? And I know it was by accident, but can you, do you please tell me in um, full detail, how did it happen? Well, because in 91, I came to Italy to work with the La Bionda brothers. And they had the big recording studio in Milan called Logic Studios. That, that recording studios was the first recording studios, 48 digital piece. So that was the uh, Logic it was incredible because they had a very big recording studio. So when Pavarotti, for example, for uh, lyrical songs would record with a big choir, then he would come to Logic Studios. When I started working there, we had Depeche Mode, Sting, uh, a lot, a lot of people would record there. So when I started working there, they actually found out I found out I was also a singer so working in the office they found out I was a singer um therefore I did the first vinyl with the La Bionda brothers and people after were like oh can I ask you a favor can you please sing I I wrote a song a dance track because in the in the street where Logic Studios was they had a, a lot of distribution center of vinyls all those people had to come to the studio to do the preparing of the vinyl. In, in our recording studio, we had that uh, office, that studio, where they would pre prepare the printing of the vinyl. So uh, a lot of people would come by and ask, listen, uh, I have that song. Can you sing this dance track for me? And I said, yeah, I can sing it, but you cannot use my image nor my name. And they said, well, okay, so they, I would go to the studio in the evening or in the weekends. I got paid for it. And then I think the first, first, first dance track was, real commercial dance track was on the label. It wasn't a record company yet. On the label, Do It Yourself. And the project was Happy Man. And the song was called Are You Ready? And that was released in 93. So from that moment, I started doing dance tracks. Oh, Incredible um story. Um question um wait, can you still hear me? Yep, yeah, I'm still there. Oh awesome. Um question seven. How did um the the project yoga come about? Okay, I was called by uh DJ Ross Rossano Primi to come uh, to uh, Time Records in Brescia uh, to do recording. He said, we want to do recording because I was doing a lot of Eurobeat songs for different companies. And he said, well, with Time Records, we are doing a project for 
Japan for AVEX. If you can come and um, record, we, we want to record some tracks. So actually I recorded more songs that day, but we started with yoga. I don't remember if uh, which was the first one, but we did three of yoga, Dam Dari Dam, uh, No Nobody's Love, and another one, the third one, who remembers? There was a third one anyway. Um, so I, as, was that the same uh, time? Because I know the third one, Bye oh, Bye Baby. Bye Bye Baby, baby. Bye, bye, baby Balloon. Yes. So that one. Yeah, so we have uh, Bye Bye Baby Balloon, No Nobody's Love, and Dam Dari Dam. There were oh, three songs, different years, I think uh, 99, 2000, 2001, something like that. So that was the yoga project. And that was released with and done with Nicola Ferrando. Nick Ferrando was his name. A very young, I think he was about 17 when I met him. But he was already incredible in the studio. So he really was a young guy, a very promising uh, producer. Oh, incredible story. Um, and yeah, like, um, is she really showed his talent by making a memorable song? And that question is coming up now. Um, tell me about the creation of Dam Dariam. Uh, tell me about that. Yeah, the creation of um, your hit song Dam Dariam. Yeah, well, uh, I, 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 I have to be honest because I went there, I sang and they would pay and then it, it, we didn't have internet yet. So they would release a song and I didn't know with who, when, why and how long. I, I didn't know anything. Those things came later. So I would ask them like, oh, uh, I, when I would see them for different recordings, for other recordings, I would say, ah, how did the track go? And they say, oh, I, I have the vinyl for you or I have a CD to give to you, a compilation. You take it home for your archives, you know, to keep it for yourself. But, you know, I wasn't really following that very much because... I wasn't, I wasn't the image and I wasn't the official name because they had to use different names and images, you know? Uh, and all those things came out later when we had internet and all kinds of websites where you would, you could, you know, find your information about tracks, discogs.com. Yeah. Obviously, uh, even me, sometimes I thought, where, where is that song? Because actually when it was about, when it was the time of COVID, I came home and I, I had a lot of streamings. And with those streamings, a lot of people would write to me like, hey, I love this song and I love that song that you will be singing. And I was like, I don't know anything about this title. And they, a lot of Japanese people would send me the links uh, of YouTube and I would listen and I would say, oh God, that's me, you're right. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God. So maybe in a few streamings, I, I discovered like 10 songs that I didn't even remember. Uh, so that's, it's been funny. Uh, you know, it's actually in the last years that I've been discovering a lot of songs that I've been singing in the 90s, in the year 2000s, yeah. Yeah, like Melody Castorali, your good friend. Castorali, yeah, she's a very good friend. She was the same, like me. Yeah, like because I told her about her... Um, memorable songs from her time with uh Mauro Farina in the Siphon group she doesn't yes. remember that and I had to send her the links to jog her memory and she totally <laughs> remembers I know I know I, it's crazy because oh and once me and Melody went to a show and that was in October not not in 22 but 21 we went to a show by car and in the car this guy is putting songs and he says, oh, Melody, this is one of your songs. And he turns the music on and I'm like, oh my God, did you sing this song? And she says, yeah. And I said, I was the producer. I, I wrote the song, but I couldn't sing the vocals because I was involved with the contract of the sound lovers. So we were looking for a voice and they said, well, well we have the voice, don't worry. I know who to call. So I found out that my sunshine was sung by her. It's oh, incredible. So the world is very yeah. small eh? in the end. Oh, I was happy to find out that she was the singer of the song. Oh, indeed. She has an incredible vocal range. Yeah, 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 she does. 
Um, question, Ted. Did you ever feel like you were making something special um, with um, Dom Dottium when you were first recording it? Not at all, because we did so many recordings. Jordan and I did so many recordings that I did try to write the titles when I would go home. But most of the times, I did not know what the name of the artist would be. So that's why we 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 did not know what was going to come. And, and to be honest, you were just singing, you know, you would sing the, the track and you would go home and you would sing another track the week after. It, no, we didn't have any idea. You find out after many years, it's now that we know that a lot of things happened with the songs, you know, even all the compilations and in with AVAX or in, in Japan, we just didn't know with the Eurobeat what was going on. Oh, we were yeah. in Italy, there was no internet, we just didn't know. Oh, indeed, at um, at um, Dance Mania, which is um, coming up, question um. Question 10, what was your reaction to the song being included in the hit album series, Dance Media, and getting worldwide exposure in the hit video game series, Dance Dance Revolution? That is it. I, I discovered maybe just a few years ago, because we didn't know. I didn't know. I really did not know, but... but... It's, it's obviously incredible because then you find out slowly a lot of people. That was when I started doing my YouTube channel that I would go, uh, I, put it, I would put the songs and I was trying the information to find out for the information where it was released and when and what kind of compilation. And then I found out, in, because when you go on discogs.com, you put the title and the song and then comes out where they are. You know, in every compilation that that they know of, and so I I actually did a culture. I had my um, information coming out all in 2020, I think. So many of the things I didn't know, I found out the last four years. Oh yeah, like indeed, because like getting um exposure in um Japan is incredible because like yeah. the Japanese can adapt to different cultures despite not um being fluent in um your um language but they but still they would do it they do it do choreography right you remember that yes they have this that one choreography yeah. for every song and everybody dances in the same way yeah it's incredible eh? oh yes indeed um question um 11 what is your favorite club in um Italy that is a bit difficult to say because I don't do clubbing. I've, I've never been, when I uh, arrived in Italy, I started working and I was always a full-time worker in an office. I didn't really have time. So when I was going out, I was with the band in clubs playing or I would be performing uh, as an artist, but I did see so many clubs. It's difficult to, to choose one that was my favorite club because it's always been a job. It's been more a job to me than going for fun. In Holland, I did go dancing just for fun. And there was this little club I remembered in Breda, where I lived. Uh, the Excuse was the name, where we'd, we would be dancing all the soul to soul. Num yeah. You know, the uh, Pump Up the Jam and all those oh, things yes. of 91. It was incredible. An incredible time. But to, 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 to name a club in Italy, that is my favorite club. No, I don't have one. Oh, uh, that's a fair answer because um. Sorry. <laughs> you're you're fine. I appreciate honesty, but I did like the whole Holland um answer because, like I said, like I I'm I was born before, uh, I was born after your time when you went partying, and yeah. I could tell you that I was born in the wrong era because I yeah. would have loved <laughs> yes. to have lived through that. Yeah, you were too little. In the 90s, you were too little, of course, yeah. but we, we had the, I really lived the 90s as a dancer, as a, um, not, not no longer a teenager, of course. So when the 90s started, I was in my 20s, 
starting the 20s and I've lived the, the musical industry, how much money there was to invest. Um, we Sometimes that is difficult for the social media. I mean, we, had, we did not have social media, but we would really sell millions of copies. Oh, real copies, real copies, not the Spotify yes. streamings or whatever. You know, we don't yeah, buy, we didn't buy followers. Things. We didn't have to buy followers. We would sell our records. Yeah. So you would sell millions of records in the whole world. That is just something that we realize now how special that was in the 90s. And then when in 2000, internet came up, 2001, it was already a crisis. And 2004, it was deep musical crisis. So now it's all about social media, but it's a lot of fake. So I'm, yeah, it's a lot of good things still happening, but it's also a lot of fake things. Oh, indeed. Indeed. Like, um, how I got into dance music was because of Dance Dance Revolution and watching MTV Jams. That's how I got into trance and um techno. Yeah, yeah. And right. there's still uh, there's there's almost no television left. The, the radios have their uh, platform on the TV. They have their live streaming of their show on the on the TV. But the, all those programs, MTV, Top of the Pops, all those beautiful pro. There's not much left. Oh yeah, indeed. Unfortunately, uh, yeah. Um, question um twelve. What is your favorite dance move? Oh, dirty dancing, of course. Oh, yes. uh, I was I was a little girl, but I mean, I think I was about fifteen, sixteen. I I was. Oh wow. I was yeah. um, really in love with that movie. Oh, yeah, great And movie. we remember, we would come out of the cinema and go straight to the discotheque. Ah, and then when the song came in the disco, I mean, then at the time, uh, the time of my life would be in on the, you know, on the floor in the discotheque, yeah. you would dance the song and, yeah, crazy time. Dirty dancing. Obviously, for me, fame and... Um, Flash dance were really important because I was a dancer. I was yeah. already in the dance scene. I did uh, remember that I I participated to the, um, there was, um, uh, the people of fame would come to Holland and there was like, a, uh, how do you call that? The, the, they would travel the cities and yeah. talents could go dancing and you would have a preview. I have the thing of fame, the fame uh, gare, we call that. Uh, yeah. It was, you would have to dance and they would, send you through and there would be a winner I wasn't a winner anyway because I participated when I was 14 unfortunately when you are 14 you are in the group between 14 and 25 years old so I was just one of the many it would have been better if I would have still been 13 years old to participate to this thing uh, but it was an incredible experience anyway I think my my favorite movie is is Dirty Dancing um great movie and answer like but how can you not talk about greece or i mean oh yeah i know all the songs by head and the first musical movie for me was the sound of music because my father yes. took me there when i was six years old and i know that whole cd by hat with julie andrews all the songs incredible um answer but my favorite dance move is um you know doing the Carlton and the hip hop moves that Will Smith did in the Fresh <laughs> Prince and anything yeah, um and um anything Michael Jackson really yeah yeah but that was for, that was later then when you when you were a little bit bigger yeah that is yeah. your time yeah that's right all right um question um thirteen. Tell me about the creation of Bye Bye Baby Balloon, which is a sequel to um, Dan Dada Yam. Yeah, I don't remember. I wasn't the producer. I, I I have to be honest. I was just called, come to the studio and record. I would call, I would do this song. I think they told me it was a follow-up. I suppose they told me, but I really don't remember anything. Just yeah. going and going back home. I really don't remember. Yeah, like uh, Mel, your good friend Melody told me that the reason why she doesn't remember most of her songs from Siphon and Dance Dance Revolution is because um she was what we 
what she told me was a turnista, which is so much. the same for me. You would go to the studio. They give you the lyrics in your hand. They say, listen to the song. These are the lyrics. This is what you have to do. So you didn't even study before, but there was no way they could send a mail. So you would go there, listen to the song. This is the melody. These are the lyrics. Put it together and, and be as quick as you can. And then you get paid and you go home. So that's the way it went. Yeah, great answer. And um, what was your reaction to having another song in the Dance Dance Revolution series? Uh, I told you, I found out late. I didn't know. I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, like it. It gives you um exposure as an um artist. I know, but but you you have to know. You know because you. You are there, but I didn't know about it. So I, I, I can't tell anything because I, I just found out, you know, it's, yeah, the it's greatest... good to know. It's really good to know uh, having all these fans and not only for sound lovers or whatever, but for all the things that I did. That's what, that's why it was so nice to do this YouTube channel and to make a playlist uh, with all the featurings. So I made a playlist now, hardcore songs, Eurobeat songs, uh, featurings, different featurings. The Sound Lovers, Happy Men, all the latest songs. It's good because it's like uh, remembering, you know, it's also a, a curriculum vitae, how we call it. Just to go back and, and see your own biography. Oh, indeed. Um, Tell me the differences between your regular speaking voice and your singing voice because you have an incredible... um singing voice and you have a lovely accent i probably i have a, a dutch dutch accent i suppose anyway yes. um yeah well singing and uh and 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 speaking are two different things but uh my my i was lucky probably because being a white person uh, I was able to uh, do a lot of different things with my voice so i would just change the timber so yes. I would ask them, what kind of timber do you want? The heavier one? The, um, the rocky one? Do you want the, I'm a Bobby girl? You want, you want a baby voice? You want a woman's voice? You want a big voice? Then you, we would adapt the, the, the high tone. I mean, I would just ask them, what do you want? And they sometimes, some, sometimes people would say, oh, just do it with your own voice. But, you know, after the sound lovers, I would always have to try to do something a bit different. I couldn't be like, hey, that's the same one as the sound lovers, you know. So I always tried to create different voices. And, and when you are a black person, they have those wonderful, incredible yes. voices, but usually very recognizable and not easy to change. Yep. So, but but I was a turnover. I, I had to change my voice. I had to try always, you know. Uh, and it was fun. Oh yeah, like it sounded like fun because in um in your yoga songs you have like a high um girlish voice. I've all my life I've been wondering who's the singer until I found out years later that it was um you and you're really yeah, good yeah, at yeah. changing your voice and yeah, having yeah, yeah, yeah. and holding those high notes. Yeah. Well, the younger you are, I was a soprano anyway, and the younger you are, uh, when you sing a lot, your voice is always in, in shape. After, of course, I, I, I did be doing a lot of rock. I prefer the, the, the rock scene, Tina Turner, and she was my wow. She was my everything. Um, well, you, 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 do, you do adapt. I don't do many songs with that high. Well, I did one now with Eurodance Vibes, the one Never Give You Up, DJ Samus J with MC Fix It, you know, the old rapper of Capella. Uh, yep. But I always try to do more like Luis Rodriguez, Rhythm of My Heart, not, not the very high ones, but just the easy ones. You know, when oh, you're on yes. stage doing it live, when you're tired, when you're traveling up and down and there and there and there, and you do your shows, if you don't have the very difficult ones, you can do them easily, even if you're tired. It's a trick. Oh, yes, indeed. Um, How um does it feel to have two songs that still resonate with fans 
of Dance Dance Revolution till this day because you get Japanese fans um giving you um giving you props and um obviously fans in um the United States that grew up with those yeah. songs. Yeah, it's they this you know I think uh, I'm not always happy with internet. I'm not always happy with social media. But maybe uh, there's one positive side on the COVID thing. There's not. There's nothing positive, uh, obviously, of that period. But the only thing that happened, which was different than in, in other years, is that we had so many streamings, right? Uh, everything became... We never had a lot of contact with our fans until... Uh, at COVID time, we would promote our singles with streamings. Hey, all those kinds of uh, StreamYard, Hangover, uh, Twitch, and all those kinds of um, platforms on the computer and on televisions. We we finally had like streamings that would take maybe an hour. And, and the fans would ask us questions. They could see me uh, talking about my normal life or about my family, my dog, my five cats, you know. Usually... The artist is very far away from you. Uh, but doing all those streamings, people could ask you questions and they became closer and they can follow you on Facebook and they can see you. It's um, it's like the distance is, is gone between, be, between people. I mean, I, even now with my family in Australia, we do have a video call, you know, just like, hey, hello, hi there. It's crazy that with Wi-Fi, I mean, I call my family on the other side of the world and I can just see them and talk to them instantly without even paying because it's Wi-Fi. It's an incredible, obviously, uh, this evolution. Uh, it's it's wow. It's good because it um, kept away the distance. Hey, it's it's now every everybody is close to each other, and I think that's a nice thing to have the fans writing me from America. I have so many fans from Canada, Japan, everywhere over the world writing and you can just answer so that's incredible oh indeed it um yeah like i'm that's how i was able to um find um your sound lover songs because i look because you could just look it up on youtube just type away and you have a new and everything's song. A, yeah youtube is incredible even things that i didn't remember then when those people from japan sent me the links i was like oh Let's go and have a check. So I would write the, the link on YouTube and then any kind of version of that song comes up. Eh? And uh, I could choose the best quality one and then download it on my computer and read. Uh, I, I would also then again put it on my channel. So it's been an interesting period to find out a lot of songs that I, I lost. I actually just lost thing other there's still a lot of songs that I don't know where they are and who with what name they were released there's probably still songs that I would have to find where they are and not covers eh? always uh, almost always uh, not yeah, like inedited new songs no covers but I don't know where they are <laughs> so oh, yeah they will probably slowly we will find more songs oh indeed um question um Question 17. How does it feel to make your mark in the dance music community? Uh, well, you know, it's still, I'm I'm grateful. I'm grateful because I told you, I, I wasn't looking for this at all. It happened to me. And now it's the job that I do. So now I'm traveling the world. And this year I will also add Cuba. We're going to Cuba, to Poland, to Slovenia, to Sweden, to Spain. It, it And I love traveling because it opens your mind anyway. And you meet all those wonderful people and your fans. And yeah, I now realize how lucky I am. I'm just very grateful. Oh, indeed. Um, question um, 18. What is the feeling you get when you are on stage um, singing and going uh, I, on tour? Energy. I. Some people ask you, are you nervous? No, not at all. The more people, the better it is. I get a lot of power. And uh, 
Yeah, it's like having a bomb in my body. When the more people I see, I always love being on stage because then you can finally look people in the eye. You know, you have that eye contact. I love it. Oh, indeed. I, and um, yeah, like when I watch your um videos in preparation for this interview, it always looks like you're having a lot of fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I do have to be careful now. This year, I want to try not to be every day in a different place. I told myself, not if I have three shows, stop for a little while because I don't like it to be rushing and running up and down. And then when you have that third night to feel tired, if you are too tired, you can never give 300%. And you have to do that. So uh, I don't want it to become too much of a job. It is a job. But I still wanted to remain something that I love doing. So that's why I decided to take it a little bit more easy this year. <laughs> oh, that's my promise to myself in 2024. A great answer. And um, question um, 19. What is the most, what a song is the most fun for you to perform? I suppose now in the latest years, before it was Runaway, the first single release of the Sound Lovers, now it is Surrender. Because uh, the reaction when you do like a used to be, and then the people surrender, everybody's singing. And I think that's probably the, even if it's it's not the song that I thought would, that would, I really said that's not going to be a hit. And it was a hit single, I don't know why, but it, it happened. Um, I like, to do that one because it's the one I keep until I can always keep it for the end of the show and people are always waiting for this one so I suppose it's surrender of the sound lovers yeah a great answer at um question 20 what's your favorite memory of um performing live oh there's many there are very there's too many there's been so many festivals since the 90s, um, 2000s, my gosh, big festivals. Yeah, it's a bit difficult to say which one. I suppose the ones, the biggest ones that we do in the big stadiums, right? Um, yeah, a lot of TV shows. Uh, my favorite one, it's difficult to say which one is my favorite one. There's been one Maybe the, the biggest, the first biggest one was in 97 in Moscow, so in Russia. And I remember I was impressed because it was the Camel Rock Trophy. And I remember that I was in this big Gorky Park and people were hanging in trees to be able to see us. And I was on stage with Ricky Martin and big, for me, huge artists. So I remember the that feeling for the first time, I think it was one of the the, the biggest festivals, 80,000 people, and my first time to see so many people together. And with big artists on stage, I had one hour of concert to do. So it was, um, wow. Incredible answer. And uh, question um, 21, what is your most memorable studio session? Uh, I think that was when I did a recording, maybe with John and Anina. In the, well, well, I was working at Logic, and in '93 they asked me for a collaboration to do vocals for John and Anina. She's a very famous Italian artist, uh, and I did the show. I did that singing with her. But after that, they would ask me to, to participate to a TV show. Festival Bar is the name in Italy. And I think that was uh, incredible because it was 93. I just started, you know, uh, and probably that was something that really, really impressed me because it's one of the most famous TV shows and they asked me to perform with her. So, yeah, that's probably one of the most important ones, the one of the first big ones and important ones. Great um, answer. And, um, Question um twenty two, what kind of beats do you prefer singing over? House Euro beat or Euro pop? 
uh, probably a little bit more Europop because Eurobeat, as you know, is just so quick. <laughs> oh yes. my God. And, and there's a lot of vocals blah, 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 and and, uh, and backing vocals and it's all a bit too quick for me. It's not the music that I like dancing to. So let's say I prefer Euro dance, Euro pop. Definitely. Yeah. I hate great answer. Question um, 23. Tell me about your relationship with Melody Castorelli. Castellari. Yes. Uh, Melody, uh, act she's always been... Um, there's many of the, the dance scene. of Obviously, we've been uh, living all together in the 90s, doing all those festival shows. And you would always meet somebody on a television show, on a, on a live show. And then it's Kim Lucas, and then it's Neja, and then it's Corona, and then it's ICMC, and then it's Marvin, uh, and Alexia. And we would all, again, meet. And then when I go abroad very often, and you have Mr. President, the Captain Jack, and then you go Snap, and then it's Technotronic, and, and Ace of Base, and Aqua, Wickfield, and Lee, it's incredible. It, I always love meeting all those people. And with Melody, I have a special relationship because we also see each other just, you know, having a pizza together or uh, going to a festival together, to a concert together. We're just also friends. Yep, you two are friendship goals. And I really had to give kudos to Melody because she gave me your contact information and, and she's the reason why I I was able to score this interview. So I'm really grateful for her. Yeah, okay. Well, I'll, I will tell her. She's a good girl. Eh? I will tell her. Oh, yes. And, um, tell me about your favorite memory about Melody. Uh, I think, well, that's a lot. Yeah, we do recordings together also. Eh? I go to her, record, record all kinds of songs. Um, a lot of fun it was when we, we are working together for years now. Eh? But uh, another one I like very much is when we did in 2021, we all got together with 14 A artists to do a song called um, A Christmas With Love. And the whole group we would name Dance Legacy. Actually, we uh, we wrote the song, me, Melody and Lee, um, Neja, Kim Lucas and Dani, you know, the one of Benassi. So six girls would write the lyrics and the melody of this song because Maxwell sent us the music. We made the melody and the lyrics. And I loved doing it. And and that there from that period, actually, me and Melody, we are seeing each other more often because she's not very far away from me. Uh, and I think it's about like 30 minutes driving to go to her place. So uh, that's a very nice experience. That was really good. Incredible um, answer. And um, anyway, um, those are all the questions I had for you. Thank it was you. wonderful interviewing you. It was amazing meeting you. I loved hearing all those stories. And um. You are in an amazing and um talented um songstress and very nice and it was a lot of fun. Oh, thank you very much, Jordan. How? Keep we keep in touch. Let me know when everything is ready and uh, we keep in touch with Facebook, Instagram, wherever. Oh, okay? indeed. We should um me you and a melody should do a live we stream. We have to go to we have to come to to New York. We have to come your way. We have to come to America. Yeah. Let's hope or, one day it will happen again. Oh yeah. Or we could um do it through um Zoom. Uh, yeah, all three of us yeah. just having fun together. Okay, well, maybe we, we, we are all really busy, of course, but yeah. uh, I'm going to get my daughter from school and you are going to have a wonderful day because your day okay. is early and for me, it's afternoon already. So I say bye to yeah. you and to everybody who will be listening to this interview. Okay. So big kisses from Italy. Ciao.